In this tutorial, we'll look at 8051 timers. Timers are rather counters. So, timers are counters, and they're important because they are independent of the CPU. And the basic function of the timer is to simply tick or simply increment. Now depending on what the input is the unit is called a timer or a counter now if a timer is incrementing depending on the internal uh, clock or the cpu clock then it is called a timer if it is uh, incrementing based on external event it is called counting now to clarify that let us assume that this is uh, now 8051 basically has two timers or counters and both are 16 bit. Now what it means is on every tick the timer would increment from say these are all zeros so these are all 16 bits so these are all say 16 bits now on every tick this would increment by one. So the next would be 0, 1, 0, 0, till all become ones. So, so they will start in hex, they would start from four zeros and end at FF. Now each increment is called a tick. Now one timer tick, the duration of this timer tick, it depends on whether it is a timer or a counter. Now, for instance, let us assume that it is timer. Now, uh, what what AD fifty one does is, so whatever the crystal frequency we have, like it's a norm to you know connect eleven point zero five nine two megahertz crystal. So say we have that. Uh, so what the uh, timer does is it divides that by twelve. Okay, so this frequency goes to the timer or counter unit. Now the reciprocal of this frequency, reciprocal of this, let us say that this is uh, timer frequency, Ft. So reciprocal of this is the time that that the uh, timer will take. So uh, for 8051, so this is 11 megahertz divided by 12 so this would be uh, 921 kilohertz and each tick will be 1.085 microseconds now so what this basically means is if i turn on the timer so it would increment every 1.085 microseconds or you can say roughly a microsecond so uh, so now what what is the use of this now uh, the basic uh, thing that you need to notice once you turn on the timer it keeps incrementing on its own it does not uh, require cpu to monitor it so it keeps counting and that is very essential in some of the projects wherein you want to you know measure the pulse duration or you want to do something uh, like a persistence of vision where you want to switch patterns uh, every say 400 hertz so uh, so what what basically it does is it it counts independently of the cpu and then uh, whenever you need it uh, you can use it so and also you can use this timers to generate delays now this is one part wherein it is measuring the internal uh, clock so uh, the other part is where it would measure the measure the uh, counts on an external pin so uh, this if it goes to the timer unit then this unit is called a counter because it is measuring external uh, commands on the external pin so i have a very good simulation of all of this and you know things would be crystal clear if you watch the simulations for now the only thing to remember is if if it is measuring internal pulses from the
crystal oscillator then it is called timer if it is measuring from an external pin it is called a counter and one more thing is it is uh, 8051 has two 16 bit units so it has two 16 bit timers or counters now let us go ahead and look at uh, look at that so uh, see this is a crystal typically 11.0592 megahertz is used so the frequency would be 921 kilohertz so if we take the time it would be approximately 1.085 microseconds and this is a 16 bit resistor so and whenever it goes from uh, 0, 0 to 2 to 16 and it overflows and up it is set now we'll go ahead and look at um, the various resistors involved in timers now we are uh, we will deal with timer 0 and everything else will be similar for timer 1 now the both the units are identical now the resistor which keeps the actual count whenever the timer ticks it's the it's called the timer resistor and as you could guess since this is 16 bit the resistor needs to be 16 bit so for timer 0 it's called t0 and it's a 16 bit resistor now it is again divided into two parts tl0 and th0 each of 8 bits so you can even access these separately now uh, so the count would start from basically uh, 0 to 2 to the power 16 which is 0 to 65,535 so uh, in decimal so now this is simply a resistor which keeps ticking now we have various modes that this resistor can be or the timer or counter unit can be configured into now the resistor which is used to set all the modes of a timer it's called the timer mode resistor now as you could see again this can be divided into half I mean two nibbles uh, nevertheless it cannot be accessed separately so it's one complete resistor but what you could see is the the lower nibble this is really de I mean dedicated to timer 0 and this is dedicated to timer 1 now there are various bits here so uh, again these are identical so you look at timer 0 in our case now uh, this is the gate control bit you will see that in the simulation and this is this bit is important it is c slash t bar so whenever this bit is zero it acts as a timer the unit acts as a timer and whenever this bit is one it acts as a counter now we'll look the, at the gate bit a little later now the m1 and the m0 uh, since these are two bits there would be four possible combinations and these are the four possible combinations all right so uh, the the first is a 13 bit timer mode this is a legacy mode which has been carried over from the processors and what basically it does is it counts from 0 to 2 to the power 13 which is uh, 8192 so from 0 it just counts up to 8192 and the 16 bit mode uh, which I call the normal mode uh, it counts from uh, as we discussed since it's a 16 bit timer it counts from 0 to the power 16 which is 0 to 65 535 uh, so this is the next mode now the third mode is is interesting and this we would see a little later what it does is uh, it keeps count in one of the uh, resistor th0 and uh, the the counter begins counting from uh, this count is like first stored in TH0 and then it is copied to TL0 the counter starts from this count and whenever it overflows the count in TH0 is reloaded to TL0 so this is called the 8 bit auto reload mode now this Mm, is useful when you want to generate a specific frequency and this is used uh, in serial communication like say you want to generate a baud rate of 9600 or a frequency of that this is pretty helpful because if we find out the time from which it needs to tick and overflow we can auto uh, reload it and it keeps generating the required frequency so this is a pretty interesting mode we'll look into it when when we deal with serial communication and the last combination is split mode and this is not quite useful so what it does is 
it splits the existing timer into two separate timers so t0 itself will be you know it would be tl0 would be uh, a separate timer and th0 would be separate timer and as you could get these are just eight bits so they would run from 0 to 2 to the power 8 which is 255 and uh, 255 is is a very small number to work with uh, even for timers or counters so hence these the split mode is rarely used now let us move ahead and look at uh, one more register which is associated with the timers now as you could see here uh, with timers we could now this is these four bits are not just timer interrupts they are interrupts in general so the interrupt should cover them in a separate video now let's just focus on timers now uh, the timer control register TCON has four bits that deal with timers. Now timer zero, these has two bits. Timer, this is uh, now since we are dealing with timer zero, let's look at that. So uh, TR zero, it's the timer run control bit. So what it means is, uh, so this is a trigger for the timer. So if we make this bit as one, the timer starts taking if there are uh, no other I mean there are various ways to configure so let's say that this when we turn on this bit the timer starts ticking and uh, as you could guess this is timer overflow so whenever the timer exceeds its max count and then this bit sets to 1 so and similarly TR1 for timer 1 and TF1 for timer 1 now let us go ahead and look at uh, look at the internal uh, details of a timer so this is a simulation which are done and this would be pretty helpful in understanding the stuff now the only thing which is not included here is this is the frequency and the actual frequency is say if this is the crystal then the actual frequency would be divided by 12 as we have seen earlier before it goes to the timer counter unit now what you could observe here is uh, there is a uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer which will select either this or this depending on what the c slash t bit is now this if you remember this bit is in the t mod register and this TR0 it's in TCON and this again it is in TMOD and now this is external pin and this is the external pin on the microcontroller now what it does is now if C slash T if it is 0 it selects the internal frequency which is divided by 12 and this is passed on now uh, you could also see that there is one more control bit now for instance assume that this is 1 so uh, if this is one then the this frequency is fed to the timer resistor which is t0 and it starts ticking now what all these bits are you would rather see it in the simulation so uh, just wait a while while i bring it up all right uh, let us look at the simulation now now what you could observe is as you discussed before so this is the clock so uh, you are not included the uh, you know divide by 12 actually it gets divided internally by 12 and then it goes to the timer counter uh, resistor now what you could observe here is this is a physical pin on the microcontroller so this is port 3.4 now this are, as you have discussed this is the c slash t or the counter slash timer bit in the t mod resistor now this is the timer run control bit in the TCON resistor so if we uh, hit this one then the timer starts uh, running now this is again the gate in the TMOD resistor and this is a physical pin on the controller which is the interrupt pin this is 3.2 now if you could uh, you know remember this the pin diagram so pin 3.2 is interrupt 0 3.2 3 is interrupt 1 and this is 3.4 so 3.4 is timer 0 input 
now so since we are dealing only with timer uh, zero in this case so this would be 3.2 and this would be 3.4 all right so now and again this is a 16 bit resistor so this is our timer zero resistor now uh, what i've done is um, so let us look at the simple mode first now if i hit the timer run control bit one what happens is uh, for a and gate so uh, since uh, okay so since the gate bit is always zero for the normal mode so this is one and for the or gate if one input is one we'll have one here always so if the gate is zero now uh, since this is one so if we make uh, timer run control bit as one and the the buffer will get one and the input will be passed so uh, so and even in the uh, you know the default uh, of the 8051 will be this so all the bits would be zero now if i turn on the timer bit and since c slash t is zero, uh, since c slash t is zero, it has selected the internal clock. So what we could observe now is, now if I hit the timer run control bit, the resistor starts ticking. So this is d0 and this is d15, so the lower bit start ticking first. Now what I've done is I've connected, uh, connected a hex display, which will display the ticks that are moving as you could observe here so this is time tick now since for simulation the speed is low i can even increase the speed of the timers so as we have discussed earlier since this frequency is divided by 12 uh, the actual 8051 timer it ticks at 1 microsecond or 1.085 microseconds to be precise so uh, so if we make tr0 as 1 the timer starts ticking and this would overflow when the all these bits would be f f f f now i could even go ahead and run it at a far higher speed so uh, so this so i have put this file on the uh, tutorials page you can download and try the simulator now uh, we will check at the next thing so before we go ahead and do that let me just uh, clear the uh, timer count here so what you have checked here is you just uh, you kept all the bits to the default so c slash t is zero since it's c slash t is in zero it is in timer mode and it is measuring the external internal clock frequency now uh, let me just clear this count and we'll be back all right so cleared the timer now now let us see how it works as a counter now for it to work as a counter the c slash t bit this should be one so let me just turn that on and uh, for even the counter to run we should make tr0 as one so this um, so this is a control bit so if we make this as uh, one the timer runs and even the counter runs now for the since it's in counter mode it will not run on the internal frequency so since this bit is one it will select the external pin so if there is a high on pin 3.4 the counter starts ticking uh, let me just check okay what happens is if you if it is in counter mode when c slash t is one so at each high pulse on the pin 3.4 the resistor starts incrementing this is pretty clear now if you put if you put this again back in uh, timer mode it starts running now for the counter mode it just keeps ticking on each high pulse on the t0 pin now let us go ahead and look at this section now uh, this is interesting now see uh, the gate bit was zero in uh, when we used the timer in normal timer or counter mode but if you want to use timers with interrupts that is where the gate uh, comes into picture now if we turn the gate bit one and uh, now if if i 
go ahead and uh, now let me make this interrupt zero and let me turn off the timer now this timer now it's in uh, since now we'll make this as timer first timer with interrupt so since c slash t is zero it's in timer mode the unit is in timer mode and and the gate is turned on now if the gate is turned one so you could observe that we have a zero here so unless we have an interrupt on an external pin the unit would not move forward because if this is zero then this would be zero and uh, no frequency would be coming in now let us make the interrupt one now as soon as the interrupt one and the timer run control bit is made one the timer starts ticking so as as long as the interrupt on the pin is high the timer stops i mean starts ticking if i turn it off the timer stops so you could observe here now what this could be used for is to measure the pulse width or the pulse duration say you have an ultrasonic sensor and you want to measure the pulse or of or the you know duration of the echo that is where it comes handy or any other application where you want to you know measure uh, the pulse width of an external uh, pulse so so whenever the interrupt pin is one the timer continues to tick now there is one more mode which you could check now this is we have made the unit to work as a timer now to make it as a counter we will make this as one now uh, instead of ticking on the clock pulse if the interrupt is high it ticks on the external pin now this is interrupt in conjunction with you know a counter a external counter now this is hardly useful so uh, this uh, you can you need two external pins one uh, you know one if it is one only then the counter starts ticking now uh, let us uh, revise this and look at what the useful combinations would be now the gate is zero so we will discard the interrupt part here now uh, the first is uh, the normal timer mode so if c slash is zero it works as a normal timer as you could see here now if we make c slash t as one and tr one uh, tr run control bit is still one then if we keep keep giving pulses at this pin it works as counter and you can as we have seen we could use it also uh, in conjunction with the interrupts so this was a simulation you could play around it, uh, with it we will put it up in the tutorials page now in the next uh, sessions we will see some of the practical uses of timers and we will do a couple of examples on them thank you for watching